Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to head out to West Bay, Galveston. We're still in the process of trying to break in the Mercury motor. And what we're gonna do is launch from the causeway somewhere like around that Tiki, Tiki Island boat ramp and see just how far we can go on one tank of gas. What I've put inside her so far is like six and a half gallons because I got this fuel tank right over here that I bought specifically for the skiff and we're gonna just put this inside there take that with us that's our insurance policy because we don't want to go too far away and then come to find out we have problems with our sending unit and how much fuel we got um, that's gonna save us uh, to be able to get back to the ramp. But I, I seriously doubt that we're gonna need that. We're gonna see how far we can go. I know the results will be kind of skewed until we actually get the motor broken in. When we open her up, you're gonna waste a lot more gas than you would at like 50% power. So let's get out there, see what we can do. If we see any birds or anything like that working, we'll stop and drift a little bit. Hopefully we'll get some fishing in, but for the most part, we're still just gonna concentrate on trying to break her in. Here we go. Keeping the fingers crossed that we can, actually there's no need to keep the fingers crossed. I'm pretty sure we can make it all the way to San Luis Pass and then back. The winds are what I'm worried about. Forecasted at around nine miles an hour. We got the little micro skiff back there. H skiff 13 for those of y'all that are wondering what it is. You can find out about them at Manatee Marine Unlimited. They are the US dealer, the sole US dealer in order to get information on them contact Julian over there tell him what's up and let him know that I sent you so that he'll know where the traffic is coming from that definitely lets them know that hey Mark is driving enough traffic over there as far as interest con is concerned you don't necessarily have to buy one but if you're curious what the prices are that's the best way to find out like what they op like what they offer mine is almost fully loaded uh, I left off a few features on it, but sky's the limit. It's just like purchasing your own boat. So um, it's not that I don't want to answer questions. I can tell you one thing, but there may be a lot of options that you don't need on your skiff. So you just truly have to get in contact with them. Okay, we've made it to our first fishing spot. I'm just gonna idle our way into the, uh, the likely uh, areas on being able to catch a fish. We'll be there in just a second. Okay, shimmer swimmer. We're using the wrong hook, but that'll get down there because the water is pretty high. So that'll help us get down there. There you go. Get a couple of casts and then start loosening it up just so that you can get further. Because I'm just going to idle us and that's going to make noise. I'm going to kill the motor while we're here at the prime area. And then we'll start it back up. Start the timer. There we go. Uh oh, Christian's on. Just killed the motor too. 
Oh yeah, another flounder. And didn't I call it? I was like, let's go to a spot where we can get some flounder and just hop them. There you go. There you go. The, uh, you got the, uh, what do you call it? The grips over there. No, 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 no. Nice. Good catch, son. You want me to get a picture for you? Yep. Nice fish. First one of the day. All right, last cast and that's it for spot number one. Yeah. You can certainly see a lot more up here and I don't gotta worry about my rod hitting you, not my lure, but my rod. Man, we ain't moving. You know the crap thing about this is whenever I get snagged an oyster, I'm not gonna wanna take, until I get a trolling motor, I'm not gonna wanna pull the skiff over there because I don't, I would rather the trolling motor hit the oyster than the skiff. And that's exactly what'll happen if I had the trolling motor on. I prefer to replace a plastic prop that doesn't cost much over trying to fix gouges in the, uh, the fiberglass. All right, I'm gonna start her back up. Spot number two, fishing a drain from a really popular and well-known marsh uh, did not pan out. Yeah, I want to say this is Galveston Island State Park. The court, like this very last house, is the entrance to Dana Cove. It's got to be. We'll go there and fish for a little bit. Yeah, I wonder what tower that is. I'm going to look at Google Maps before we actually start up the outboard. But yeah, I'm wasting time doing this, so I'm going to put this away. We're about to head out. We're going to find out where we're at right now, everyone. We got three quarters of a tank. Yeah. All right, so let's see where we are. Did you use a jellyfish for bait? No. Trying to catch a turtle, maybe. We're, st we're on the other side of Galveston Island State Park. We just basically didn't do anything but that water tower yeah you're right that is jamaica beach's water tower there we go kill the motor give you all a little context to what's going on right now we have made it to san Luis pass so from the causeway bridge all the way to the San Lu we're not quite there. We're probably, what would you say, son, a quarter mile? Maybe a little, little more than a quarter mile. Yeah, I don't know. From the San Luis Bridge. It's just right behind y'all. Um, but we made it. Uh, nice, easy ride, open water, the winds. We've got 10 mile an hour from the southeast. So us fishing the, uh, I guess you're gonna call it the northern portion of the island uh, on that bank it allows us to take a little bit of shelter from that wind we did get a bit wet so definitely a wet ride but uh, we've got half a tank of fuel and I have put so far six and a half gallons in it it's supposed to be a six gallon aluminum tank so six and a half is what we got in there and then just for safety purposes that right there is a two and a half gallon tank that we filled up. So you've got some crazy good range. And I'm, we were just talking about the uh, not running it maybe efficiently as possible because if you get on plane, you're able to get through the water a lot easier with less friction that's hitting the hull. So uh, I'm sure our efficiency is gonna skyrocket when we can just get on plane really quick and then just push through we've almost broken in the skiff as far as the motor is concerned i think we've got like maybe two more hours before i'm going to start running her at full blast because the dealer ran it for two hours i have ran it for now five hours so it's a total of seven that we're probably pushing close to eight hours 
but yeah everything is all in well just having a blast out here doing the uh, open water stuff because i'm still too scared to go into the marsh and deal with oyster uh, not having any control over the skiff itself is really scary and uh, I don't want to make some type of an expensive mistake so we will just continue fishing open water drifting with the current and stuff like that hitting spots that I know looking for birds and uh, that is it I am done talking we're gonna drift a little bit fish and hopefully we'll be able to put a catch or two together catch us a gator trout oh gosh yeah oh he got off son dang it <laughs> like right when I said it yeah I just launched it let the wind take it because we're casting with the wind from that direction and we got a long way back son good night that is a long way Half a tank. I think we got this. No, I want to see how far we can get on on one tank. Here we go. Read some books. Alrighty, y'all. That's gonna do it for the day. So, if y'all were wondering how far, let's get this thing turned on check that out we are on empty we did approximately 45 50 miles somewhere around there once we get home i can check google maps do the measure distance and we'll see exactly how many miles we put uh, before we got to empty we did not actually run out of gas out there so our spare gas can is still got uh, it's it's two and a half gallons of fuel in it. Man, this thing is really hard to undo. But uh, yeah, uh, very, very good day on the water. We finally just fully broke her in. So our next trip out, we're gonna be able to start opening her up and uh, just seeing what she can really do. So 10, we got like, I wanna say nine, 10 hours of, uh, break-in time and I'm just looking forward to the next trip out so I'm not too sure if I'm gonna do the skiff or if I'm gonna bring the kayak either way stay tuned to the channel for those of y'all not subscribed definitely consider subscribing you're gonna see a lot more content from this platform and uh, I'm looking forward to being able to present y'all um, with some fish catching from it finally so we'll see how it's gonna go but uh, as it stands a good day on the water and that is not i'm not far enough forward so that sucks let me uh concentrate on what i'm doing before i break something but yeah uh if you enjoyed this one don't forget to click that thumbs up button i definitely would appreciate it and uh, until next time tight lines y'all